Hey everyone, welcome to this tutorial on how to use Metrica Playbase. Metrica Playbase is a user-friendly video analysis software built for coaches, analysts and anyone who wants to break down performance in sports. Whether you're preparing for a match, analyzing training sessions or building presentations for players, Playbase gives you powerful tools to work fast and effectively. Let me show you how. First thing you want to do is create a workspace. Give it a name and choose the location you want to save it in. Let's take a quick look at the workspace layout. The video manager. This is where you will import your full matches. Click the plus button to create one. You should create one video project per game for an optimal workflow. Playlists. This is where you will organize the clips you cut from your full match or add any short clips you wish to add directly to your playlist. Video canvas. This is your main viewing area and where the videos will play. Info box, where information about your clips and the events appears. And the timeline. This is where you scroll through the video, cut clips and review events. Everything is clean, accessible and designed to make your analysis smooth and intuitive. The video manager is where you will create your video projects and these are the playlists where you're going to organize the clips that you save. Let's create a video project. Click the plus button and add as much detail as you want. You can create as many different projects as you want. Ideally, you should create one per game for better organization. Click on add video and choose the video file of the full game you have on your computer. The software will do a brief check of the video properties. With the video added, you can now scroll to any part of the game in your timeline. You can see the duration of the game, the controls for play, pause and speed. Click anywhere in the timeline to watch any moment of the match. Quick tagging is a fast way to capture key moments while watching the video. First, create a playlist inside your folder. Simply click on them to rename them and organize your saved clips in your favorite way. Create as many playlists as you wish. Go to the moment of your video you want to save and select the playlist you want to save it in. You can save a clip from your full match in two different ways. Press R to start recording a clip or click on the red button down here. Press R again to stop and your clip will be saved in the playlist you have selected. Press S to save a predetermined amount of time or click the blue button down here. In these two text boxes, you can choose the amount of time you want to save before and after the moment you are in your video. Click on the video cut to watch it and open the annotations module to start editing. If you want to go back to saving clips, click on the video project to select the full match timeline and keep using R and S to save or record your clips. With Playbase, you can code different events that take place in a game or training session. A code table lets you define custom events and tag them with shortcuts. Let's create one. Go to the video project you want to code events and click on create a coding file. Type a name for the coding file and hit enter. Click on it and choose code table. Click on the plus button to add the new code. Give it a name, add a shortcut or change the color. You can then choose to save or record the event. If you add a pre and post time on a code, events will be saved instantly with that exact amount of time you chose. If you don't select any pre or post time, Events will start recording when you press the shortcut and stop when you press it again. Close the code manager when you're done setting your code table. Turn coding mode on to be able to start tagging the match. You can now play the video and start adding events within the coding file you've created. Click on the events created in the timeline to review them. You can save them straight away into your selected playlist by pressing S on your keyboard. 
You can find more options in the menu on the bottom hand corner. Here. Select the event that you want to modify and click on the edit event time. Click to confirm when you're done. You can create a coding window with buttons to tag your match. Choose the video project you want to code, create a coding file, name it, click to enter and choose code pad. You can move and resize this window to your preference. The two icons to your right allow you to switch between edit and record mode, meaning if you want to make changes to the coding window, you must be in edit mode. When you're ready to start coding, turn on the record mode. Click on add code or shortcut C to add a new code. In this pop-up window, you can change settings such as the name, pre and post time, add a shortcut or change colors and shapes. You can duplicate this window on Mac, hold the Option key and drag it, on Windows, use the Alt key. Organize the buttons any way you want. Hold the Shift key while moving them to snap them to the canvas and have more control over its position. Click this button to add a tag or use the shortcut T. Tags are meant to add details to your codes. Here's an example. Let's add a tag and call it Shots. We can group it as Attack. In the tag insertion, I will choose Select After Code, meaning I will first register the code and only then register the tag. So in this case, I'll record my attack phase first, and when it's over, I'll click the tag to mark that attack with the shot event. If you choose the tag insertion to be select before code, you can select the tag before clicking on the code, or select the, the tag while the code is still recording. You can change the setting accordingly to the types of codes and tags you create and the kind of routine you prefer. Click on Add Image icon to import an image or logo and give more life to your coding window. You can also choose from the default images CodePad has. Connectors are a way to fast forward your analysis with less clicks. Let's go through them. To add a connector, simply click on the one you want then click on the code you want to connect. You have three options of connectors. The absolute connector will prevent two codes from being active at the same time. You can delete the connection by clicking on the line and then the rubbish icon. The trigger connector will start another code for you. This is useful if you want a code to trigger the start of another code. The diffuse connector will stop another code for you. This is handy if you want two codes to stop at the same time with only one click. The zoom options allow you to resize your coding window according to the dimensions you wish to have, especially the fit to canvas option, which will constrain all your buttons to the exact proportions of your window. In the background options icon, you can change your window background color and opacity. The first icon to your left allows you to save your newly created template to load the pre-existing one or load one of the templates we provide you. You can change anything about them to fit your needs and your preferences. Do you want to code live? Turn live mode on. A panel will expand to start stop the recording of your ghost capture, meaning you will have to later add the video of the match you are coding. Once you finish with live coding, choose to link the video file of your match to the video project containing the coding file. You can save your coding work into an XML file for future reference or sharing with your staff. You can export it as a CSV and use Excel or Sheets to organize your work. Import your previously created XML files from Metrica Sports or any other provider. Use the Sync Manager to synchronize your video with your XML file. This is especially useful when the time codes in your XML don't match perfectly with your video. Sync Manager lets you align them for perfect analysis. If you have several short clips and not the full game, you can add them straight in your playlists. Click the three dotted icon and choose Add Video File as Clip. Select as many short videos as you want and click Open. Be aware, 
we recommend that you use short clips for these parts for optimal editing. Do not import full games or long clips here. Use the video project manager for that so you can cut short clips from longer videos. You can trim the beginning and ending of any clip by manipulating the bars on each side of the video timeline, which will decrease or increase the duration of your video. To start adding visualizations to your clips, click on the Annotations Module button to open your video's timeline. Click the plus button to add your desired visuals. They are all separated by folders. Some will be inactive until you activate the field tracking or they might be inactive because those visuals are not included in your paid subscription. If you choose a player visualization like the spotlight, the annotation will be added to your timeline and all players detected. Choose the player or players you want to pin the drawing to and according to your plan, track his movement manually or automatically. The visualizations inside the drawings folder are meant to be overlaid on the field and you can decide its duration by trimming the annotation bar in the timeline. When you click on the player with the visual you added, an info box pops up. Here you can edit the look of your visual to your preference. You can move this box for a clearer view of the canvas. The chroma key is a way of placing drawings underneath the players. To make them look cleaner, it is applied automatically to almost all annotations you add. By clicking the chroma key annotation, you can add more colors to it for an even cleaner overlay. You can add pauses to your presentations. Choose pause and drawings and the pause icon will appear in the timeline where you are paused. To add visuals to your pause, you must click on the pause icon. In this menu, you can choose how long you want the pause to last and add any visualizations you wish. The length of the pause will only be reflected when you export the video. When you add the player visualization, the software automatically detects the players and creates a bar in the timeline where your tracking will be recorded and can be edited at any time. Depending on your plan, you can track the visual to the player manually or automatically. If your plan has automatic player tracking, you can click on the player tracking button to track the visual to the movement of the player. This will make the visual follow the player everywhere it moves until you press stop. You will repeat this process for any other player visualization. If your plan doesn't have the automatic player tracking option, you will manually follow the visuals you want to add to the players. Choose a player or players and use the spacebar to play and pause the video while you adjust the box to the player's path. As you add tracking information, the annotation bar grows on your timeline. This is saved automatically, just like every other action you do in Playbase, it constantly saves every action you do. The field tracking allows you to add 3D visualizations. Once done, you will activate other visualizations such as speed, distance, trace or future trail. If your plan contemplates the manual field tracking, click on its icon to bring up the field reference points menu. Add at least four reference points and the software should guess the rest. Otherwise, add as many others as necessary to make the field calibration as accurate as possible. When done, click process. This icon to your right, shortcut O, will show you the overlay of the field tracking performed. If your plan has automatic field tracking, your work is cut out. By clicking the button, it will calibrate the pitch automatically. You can still improve the calibration if you feel it can be perfected. The undo icon at the lower right removes the most recent visualizations one by one. Clicking the delete icon removes all visualizations you've added to the clip. You finished your analysis. Now it's time to share it. In the three dotted symbol, you can do several actions. The most meaningful being export playlist as video. So you can export your work as a video file. Choose whether to include the annotations you've created and whether to export as a single file or as separate video clips. Click browse to choose the location you want to save the video at 
and click export. To present a playlist from within the software, you can click on the presentation mode icon in the playlists module. This will full screen your video canvas so you can present your work from within the app. On the top left corner, you can easily select the clips you want to show. While in presentation mode, click the icon on the top right corner to open the visualizations panel. Here, you can add visualizations on pauses such as arrows, shapes, or draw freehand. Note that any visualizations you add in presentation mode won't be saved as clipped annotations. This day will only be seen during the presentation itself. While in presentation mode, click the icon on the bottom right corner to change and activate different settings. Choose to keep playing through pauses by turning on or off the resume play manually. Activate touch mode if you are presenting on a touch screen and you don't want the info pop-up box to show every time you create an adaptation. Change the distance and speed units if you're working with ATD clips that allow annotations to be pinned to players in presentation mode. Turn autoplay clips on or off whether you want the clips to play automatically at the end of its duration. Click on this icon or shortcut I to hide the video controls within presentation mode. We hope this was helpful. A complete tutorial on how to work with Metrica Playblaze, ideal for amateur, semi-professional coaches and analysts everywhere around the world. Check our help center for more information. We hope you enjoy.